Yeah, and a good, I think a good example of some of those, just those disorders, and you, people usually generally understand um, that these types of issues have physiological causes. There's not really much debate about schizophrenia and kind of like, oh, just don't hear those voices, you know? today we had an incident here on Ohio State's campus. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. And, right. I have heard about it in one of my classes, but one of the parking garages a student went off of. I don't yeah. know the best way to say that. There's no good way. Yeah, there isn't. And um, I think something interesting to note was I got that email too, and I like I kind of heard about it in some group me's, um, especially Never Walk Alone, which is um, one of the mental health initiative clubs I'm part of here. And OSU's official report on it was that an unidentified man somehow fell off of the top of the Lane Avenue parking garage, which, I don't know. Um, pretty difficult to do. Pretty difficult to do, um, considering that there are, like, barriers which you would have to kind of like cross first. Four feet. Right, yeah, so I have no idea why they chose to report it that way, um, but... Yeah, it was another really, really unfortunate incident. Hmm. Yeah. What was that club that you said you were a part of? Never Walk Alone. And what's the what's the basis for that group? Um, well, it's basically just it's run by um, I think Ali Rumbog, um, and she is an incredibly kind girl, and I think she her goal starting the club was to make a safe space for people who were mentally ill. So, um, for example, in the meetings, but they talk about things like fundraisers specifically oriented towards mental health. They discuss controversial topics or um, important topics on the subject. And... The um, noise from that was really loud, I'm sorry. You discuss topics yeah. about them? Yeah, and then um, in the group meet, it's a kind of a place for if anyone is having a bad day or having trouble to just text and, sorry, to just text and um, say what's wrong, and then, you know, automatically people will jump to help them. It's actually a nice thing to see because it reminds you both that, because, like, I have people in this group meet from my classes that I know, and I don't know them very personally, and I would never assume based off of a surface level analysis of them that they would have any sort of like issues like this or mm -hmm. um kind of these struggles but it it really um kind of changes your view of mental health and it, it for me it kind of really made me realize like how many people am I sitting around in these classrooms and these lecture halls that you know have maybe had a suicide attempt that have been institutionalized that have been in rehab for an eating disorder that have struggled secretly with these certain things that are, um, you know, bipolar. And it just, it kind of blows your mind to think about the breadth of these things because it affects everybody. I think the first thing that comes to mind for suicide with me is always veterans. Like, yeah. we know that about, like, once every hour there's one committing suicide. And so it's very systematic, it seems to me. Like, the, the issues that we have... Uh, with mm -hmm. suicide, I'm not sure. There's no way to know this, but I feel like that's a new thing. That it's coming at this size. So you know, what are the reasons? Why is that? What's causing the distinct change between uh, people appreciating their lives and wanting to be on this planet now compared to the past? There's no way for us to check. Right. But I do think that it's unusual that the amount mm -hmm. of people committing suicide in our day and age. Yeah. I wonder if it has. This is kind of weird, but as at, when I start to think about us being able to live really long if we're somehow able to figure out how to defeat those aging, at a certain age, you just kind of die, and I feel like as, peop as we're increasing people's ability to survive longer, if people just, I don't know, like some people just lose the reason for living, and they just right. want... So for me, I'm very positive, and I feel like I do a lot to take care of myself mentally on my mm -hmm. own, and I do that. So then when I go to class, I don't really think about other people. And I had lunch with someone the other day, and he said how he took an entire year off of school because he was really depressed mm -hmm. and really stressed. And he's like, I really wish someone had just checked in on me and asked right. if I was okay. And right. I was, I'm just sitting there kind of thinking, 
Like that that's that never crossed my mind. Ne- never crossed my mind. You wouldn't think, yeah, because you wouldn't, you just wouldn't think. And like another thing um, that I've kind of used social media for that's helped me come to this understanding, um, as well as just honestly like reading books. I like the Bell Jar, for example. Uh, Sylvia Plath, famous poet, um, she wrote it, and it's. It's a, a real story. It's a real um, narrative that she changed some of the names in and about her struggle with bipolar depression. And for all intents and purposes, um, she was just another normal girl um, who was really smart, really talented, had popular friends, had potential, and then she all of a sudden just fell in this hole. And I, I this is a little off topic, but one line from that book like sticks with me and probably will for a very long time. And I think it's probably one of the best descriptors of mental illness that I've read. And it's, she was talking about how it didn't matter where she went in the world. She was like, I could be in Paris, France under the Eiffel Tower, but I would still be within the stifling air of the bell glass that was over me, like the bell jar that was over me. So she described it as kind of being like in this jar, like, Mm -hmm. and anywhere you went, anything you did, it was through the jar. So it wasn't like anything external could could really, you know, change it. It wasn't like moving towns or moving cities could help or, you know, going to an amusement park. She was right. just like... Because I think for a lot of people, it's pretty evident that lifestyle changes are the solution that they need, but there are, like, the majority mm-hmm. of the cases are people who genuinely the chemicals in their brain cause them to feel a way that's entirely out of their control. Like, there right. are people who it's obvious that they are the cause of their own mm-hmm. issues, Absolutely. and then there are other cases where the person didn't do anything to put themselves in that position. Right. It's just as a result of their environment, it happened. 